Test one, two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Untwisting the Game Crypto. Uh, they call me Creole. I'm one half of this channel. And on this channel, we discuss all things Bitcoin, Polkadot, Cardano, and Stacks, NFTs, and the Metaverse. And always, Bitcoin is king on this channel. And Bitcoin will always be king. Um, in tonight's episode of Bitcoin Therapy, um, I have entitled it, The Fed CBDC Won't Use Blockchain Technology. And I'm going to prove this to you. Um, the Boston Fed and MIT actually released some research, uh, the first results of their uh, CBDC research uh, this past week. And I'll also open up the lines for calls um, to discuss this. If you agree, if you disagree, let's talk about it tonight. Um, and this is a live recording. So once I finish, I will go back through and put in my timestamps so you can move throughout this video uh, freely at will. And um, if we do have time, I would like to play an interview from uh, billionaire Ricardo Salinas. Uh, excellent interview he did with Bitcoin Magazine this past week as well. But um, let's just kind of jump into it. Let me get my tabs together. And um, we will jump into some of the research. But I did want to show you a couple of websites. Um, not new, but something I came across that will help you visualize the magnitude of the Bitcoin network. So uh, just enjoy the music. Okay, what you see on your screen here, I'm just going to show you um, how healthy the Bitcoin network is at this moment. Uh, it's bits.monospace.live. Um, everything that I go over in this episode will be in the description below. As you can see, you can visualize what is happening with the mempool and also the latest block. Um, and it's every 10 minutes, Bitcoin is going to uh, pump out blocks. This is what makes the Bitcoin blockchain so beautiful here um, let's go into a little more visuals okay um, here is um, IOHK's um, visualization of the bl Bitcoin blockchain and I'm just going to play a little bit of it so you can see once again the magnitude of the Bitcoin blockchain here And the name of this website is symphony.iohk.io. As you can see, the blocks are represented in spiral. And we're just going to zoom in here. And this is why the Bitcoin blockchain is so important, because past transactions are theoretically impossible to roll back. Here we are right now, zooming in on our current block. And we're just going to start exploring here. And I will address the chat. Uh, Nigel, hi. Thank you for joining. Uh, sounds all good. No cutting in and out. Um, <laughs> I actually tried to do this episode yesterday. Um, I was in a hotel and had some connectivity issues, so I went out and bought an Ethernet cord and an adapter, so we are all good. And I'm in an Airbnb right now, but as we can see, here's the current block. All of the transactions are represented, and we can actually zoom in here. We can pick any transaction, and it is viewable to the world, auditable. And let's just kind of zoom in a little bit. Oh. And now, um, with this visualization, we can actually move throughout the Bitcoin blockchain 
um, free at will here. So um, I think it's important for people to realize the magnitude of this technology. Before we jump into the topic of the day. All pa past transactions. And this is what's beautiful about the Bitcoin blockchain is that these transactions are final, right? Uh, you cannot roll these transactions back. When we talk about security of a blockchain, the only thing that your base layer to your blockchain needs to be efficient at is security. There's going to be other second and third layer solutions built on top of any blockchain, but no blockchain has the finality, the reassurance that your past transactions cannot be manipulated in any way. Theoretically. Okay, let's just take a look at the Bitcoin price right now. Again, we are looking healthy. Uh, $44,000. I have the weekly pulled up right now. Uh, we are edging back towards the 21 um, exponential moving average. But uh, be careful because right now the market makers, they are spoofing the books. Uh, they're building longs and shorts right now. We have no idea which way they will go. Okay, let me just go back to the chat for a second. Okay. So um, let's move on to our Clark Moody dashboard here. And again, I usually go over all of this information on Sundays, but um, I was prohibited. So I just wanted to point out a couple things here. Sats per dollar. Right now for $1, one U.S. dollar, you can buy 2,269 sats. Market cap of Bitcoin right now is $835 billion. We're still shy of our all-time high by 36%. Uh, and that all-time high date was November 10th of 20. 21. It's been 89 days since that all-time high. This is what's important, corporate treasuries, okay? When we're talking about um, store of value, when we're moving into the digital age, nothing will compare to Bitcoin, and the numbers prove that, right? Held in corporate treasuries right now, 1,660,430 Bitcoins. That's $73 billion, 8% of the Bitcoin supply right now is in the hands of corporations. All right. Um, money supply, we have 18,951,647 Bitcoin already mined in circulation. That's 90% of the supply that has been issued. The Bitcoin network, reachable nodes right now, we have 14,993 reachable nodes okay a uh, bitcoin tor nodes is 7969 percentage of the tor nodes is actually increasing to 53.15 percent again this all shows you the security of the network so if if an alt corner tells you that their coin is going to flip bitcoin or their coin is going to be the digital currency world currency of the world and they have 165 nodes like Ripple does, the math doesn't math, right? Let's move on to the Lightning Network. Um, one of the most popular second layer solutions on top of Bitcoin, total capacity right now, we have 3,438 Bitcoin in second layer of the um, Lightning Network. That capacity is $151 million. Total nodes on your Lightning Network is 19,993. We see this increasing exponentially, okay? So when we're talking about second and third layer solutions on top of a base layer uh, protocol, Bitcoin is light years ahead of the rest, okay? Don't get, um, don't get distracted about shiny new features, right? Because the digital currency of the world is going to be more secure. It's about security of the base layer network there. Okay, um, let's just move on here to uh, our topic of the evening. 
again, the, the Fed will not use blockchain technology for their CBDC. And I am going to lay this case out for you. Again, th this is not opinion. I am going to show you the research itself. So first, let's just go to the um, what kind of intrigued me about this. Um, I follow all of the central bank um, across the world. So I'm, I'm very in tune to what is on their mind and what they're thinking about. And if you have been following this channel for any amount of time, I preach that the Boston Fed is ahead than all other um, federal banks in America. Okay, So when it comes to technology, the Fed is going to go the route of the Boston Fed, their research. Okay, um, And here's a tw um, pinned tweet from February 3rd. It reads, the Boston Fed and MIT DCI, I'll explain what that is, today released the findings of the first phase of the Project Hamilton technological research into a CBDC and release their code, open CBDC on GitHub for contributions. Read more here. Okay, let's go into the article. And we're going to take a deep dive on this, okay, because there's so much misinformation from other YouTubers, from mainstream media, um, and honestly, from other blockchain projects. But we are going to show you exactly what's going on. Hey, Crawford, I see you in the um, chat. Thanks for joining. We are going to jump into this. Um, I'm just going to go over this first article, and then I may open up the lines for people to call in if you wish. And uh, if you don't believe what I'm saying or if you have some type of disagreement with me, or even if you agree, let me know. Um, in the comments, and I'll let you call in, and we're going to talk it out. Okay, um, so this article was posted by MIT. Um, you should know the Massachusetts Institute of Te Technology. Some of the brightest computer mi scientist minds um, study and um, are, are and graduate from this institution. Um, so, I mean, they have reputation. Let me put it that way. And they are working right now with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. So let's jump into this article. MIT experts test tech, technical research for a hypothetical central bank digital currency collaboration with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston yields progress in understanding how a digital currency might be developed in the future. So um, let's, let's jump into it. Uh, we're going to start off with this article and then we're into the actual research paper. Okay, we're going deep. <laughs> okay, in, in collaboration with the team at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, in MIT experts have begun designing and testing technical research through which further examination of a central bank digital currency can be performed in the U.S. This effort, known as Project Hamilton, is an exploratory phase, and the research is not intended as a pilot or for public deployment. Instead, the researchers have explored two different approaches that could be used to process transactions. Let's just kind of skip forward. What are these two? Okay, um, so Niha Narula, okay, she is the director of MIT's Digital Currency Initiative, okay? That's DCI, okay? What's it, what is she saying? The core of what we built is a high-speed transaction processor high-speed transaction processor, okay, for a centralized digital currency to demonstrate the throughput, latency, and resilience of a system that could support a payment economy at scale of the United States. So um, I kind of did a little research on what a high-speed transaction processor is, and I have this pulled up. Here's some research. Again, um, <laughs> And this is what I've been telling people for a while. Um, I've been in a couple couple YouTube debates. One recently was with the Logic Sphere, and I told him that uh, 
CBDCs, all CBDCs will not be blockchains. They will be glorified databases with centralized servers, okay? And this research proves that. Again, this is in uh, the description below. If you want to brush up on what um, high-speed transaction processors are, but it, it, a sentence that kind of puts it out, uh, to obtain sufficient processing throughput of a database, um, uh, to et al. propose silo for read mostly workloads in which silo scales up the processing speeds on many core CPU environments. However, silo does not scale for write heavy workloads. So remember this, write heavy workloads, okay? And here uh, they have their uh, research and uh, all of their methods here in, in this article. I will leave that in the description below, but let's go back to the MIT article, okay? Uh, we already told you, they developed two um, systems. The researchers developed two complete sets of computing source code or code bases for the software systems. One code base was capable of handling 1.7 million transactions per second, with 99% of those transactions finishing in less than half a second. What blockchain right now can handle 1.7 million transactions per second? I'll answer that for you. None. Okay. <laughs> well above the basic benchmark of 100,000 transactions per second they sought to achieve. Uh, who does 100,000 transactions per second right now? Uh, Visa, right? Okay. So they're trying to be faster than Visa. Okay. The other code base was able to process about 170,000 transactions per second. That level of throughput would have would help finalize every transaction at a central bank while enabling the growth of other machine-to-machine -machine transactions. Let's move on to the findings. So the findings have been released in a paper entitled A High-Performance Payment Processing System Designed for Central Bank Digital Currencies. We're going to go through this paper in detail. A couple other things I wanted to point out in this article, and we're going to move on to the research. Um, the, the team points out in the executive summary that, quote, several technical design questions remain open for investigation. The answers to these questions will have meaningful impacts and consequences for what options are or not available for policymakers. And this is what I'm trying to explain people in chats and in um, other groups that I'm in is that the Fed CBDC is not going to happen anytime soon. The research is still being done, and the research has to match up not only with policy, but also with code base and development. It's going to take a long time for the code, the Fed, and Congress to get on the same page. And we already know by this release by the Fed, okay, um, this paper was released by the Fed in January of 2022. What did they say? Okay, let me blow this up for you. They said the Federal Reserve does not intend to proceed with issuance of a CBDC without clear support from the executive branch and from Congress, ideally in the form of a specific authority authorizing law. So no Fed CBDC is even going to be released until the executive branch and branch in Congress gets on the same page. And that's not going to happen on the um, uh, on, on an election year. Okay, let me just take a break, break and go to the chat here and try to catch up. All right. Um, oh, we're going to get into it tonight, guys. I've got a lot of research to go over. Um, Crawford says, uh, none until Hydra is finalized. He is talking about the transactions per second. And yes, Cardano promises over a million transactions per second once their um, Hydra protocol is released. So that, that is true. Um, let's see. Um, IO, IO, IOHK. 
Uh, this is Nigel. He says, um, says 2 million transactions per second by September. We'll see. Um, we know one thing about Cardano is that um, they hardly, rarely meet their deadlines. So if it happens in 2023, that would be awesome. Okay, not uh, Crawford says double, uh, uh, I'd say double that estimate of time. Yes, you're right. Uh, Crawford says, I'm a super bull on Cardano, and I don't think they will do it this year. Me either, Crawford. Uh, <laughs> Nigel says, neither do I. Coolin. Coolin is in the chat. Hey, what's up, Coolin? Uh, Coolin and I, we've been going back and forth on some, <laughs> on some groups. Um, let me see what, how to, give me a second. This is all, this, I've got a new setup. I'm trying not to delete this comment. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Um, moving on to Coolin. Coolin says, China's digital yuan is on blockchain. Why would the other countries do the same? Or I think you mean not do the same. Um, Coolin, let, let me highlight this. Um, Coolin, how do you know China's digital, digital yuan is on a blockchain? Have you seen the source code? We do not know because China's whatever they're doing is not on a blockchain. And I guarantee you that China is not smarter than Ethereum, Polkadot, and Cardano developers and Bitcoin developers, all right? I, it's my assumption that China is using a glorified database in order to release their digital yuan this quickly, okay? Um, New, New Zealand just announced uh, CBDC, says Kulin. They did. CBDCs are coming. Everybody is going to try. Um, okay, I've caught up with the comments. Let's go back to the article. I'm going to try to keep my eyes on the comments. Okay, let, let's move on. Indeed, Narula emphasizes, quote, the policy conversation around, um, okay, the policy conversation around central bank digital currency is still in its infancy. What, what we need to realize that if America rolls out a CBDC, they're not going to sloppily do it. They're going to have everybody on board and everybody working in the same manner. Um, and we're a long way from that. And in the relation to that, she adds, quote, there are many research questions left to answer that we haven't gotten to yet, such as the roles of intermediaries. OK, that's your commercial banks. That's Visa PayPal. How to promote access securely. OK, because we know databases aren't secure and how to design for those who might not have smartphones or consistent Internet access. And this is why. This is one of the reasons why CBDCs are going to fail, because they're not solving the problem. The problem is the unbanked in the global economy, because that's where the next emerging market is coming from. OK, um, you and I, Kulin, we don't need a CBDC, right? People without bank accounts need a CBDC. So how are they going to fix that? Uh, moving on in the art, still many com countries are displaying interest in the concept of a CBDC. The Central Bank of the Bahamas, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, and the Central Bank of Nigeria have already issued CBDCs. And China is running a late stage CBDC pilot project. We all know this. And I believe all of um, these are using blockchains right now or some form of a blockchain. But I can tell you, um, Kulin and, and people in the Logic Spheres chat, um, they're not using Ripple. They're not using Stellar. So you have to ask yourself, out of all of these central banks that have already released CBDCs, why aren't they using Stellar, Ripple, Algorand, Elrond, uh, XC, XCD, XCD, all these other coins y'all talk about? Because they can't control it. This is why central banks are going to build their own blockchains and they're going to build their own central bank digital currencies. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is Jim uh, Kuna. He's the ex executive vice president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Okay, these are the guys at the Fed 
telling you what they are doing. He says, quote, We believe that even before the policy discussions begin in earnest, um, it is important to dive deeply into the technology questions. There's still questions about the technology, okay? And this research was designed with that in mind. Quote, while policy decisions impact system design, we also believe groundbreaking research can inform policymakers on what is possible. There will be no U.S. Fed CBDC without direction, without policy direction from Congress. Okay, a feasible option. So this research gave pretty much gave Congress two op feasible options here. In each of the two digital currency designs, the MIT and Boston, team, Boston Fed teams tested, users interact with a centrally administered transaction processor. Using digital wallets with individual cryptographic signatures that authorize the movement of funds, one ledger, which keeps a complete record of transactions in order they were processed, turn out to be slower of the two systems. What they are telling you is that blockchain is slow. <laughs> Base layer blockchains are slow. Okay? There's not going to be a base layer CBDC solution that lasts and that's secure. He continues, she continues, quote, we found that it had pretty significant bottlenecks. Let's move on. The researchers also note that the faster system, the one processing 1.7 million transactions per second, the transaction quantity, quote, appears to scale linearly with addition of more servers, okay? Anytime you hear servers, it's not a blockchain, okay? Let, let's move on, and I'm almost finished with this article, and then we're going to move into the research. Um, again, uh, they, they wrap up this article by saying, the question of system, system resilience is also critical to any CBDC. In this case, modeling by the Project Hamilton researchers showed that if two large regions of the U.S. lost connectivity, the digital currency system could continue to operate elsewhere and would not suffer any data loss or system distribution. The way forward. As Narula pointed out in testimony last June before the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Financial Services, about 36% of people in the U.S. who do not have bank accounts also do not own smartphones. So of all of Americans who don't have a bank account, they also do not own smartphones. A CBDC isn't going to solve the problems of the financial system. Okay, In this and other areas, policy decisions and technology design are overlapping matters. The research invo researchers involved in Project Hamilton are now pursuing another phase in their research in which they will analyze additional types of functionality related to a hypothetical digital currency. Narula ends this article by saying, there are many important design questions that have not yet been resolved, and we look forward to doing more research to address those issues. Okay, let, let me just kind of monitor the chat, and then we are going to go into the research, right? <laughs> not what people post online, not what YouTubers say is going to happen, but we're going to talk about the research from the Fed. Okay, we've got some more... Uh, got some more uh, messages here. Kulin says, look up China's BSN. Okay, I, I may look that up later. I, I don't know what BSN is. Um, Kulin says, your phone will be your CBDC wallet. They will force it through welfare and government programs. 36% um, 30, of people who are unbanked don't have phones. Is the government going to pass out free smartphones, Kulin? You know what I mean? Like, I hear you, right? The CBDCs are coming, but what I'm trying to tell you is that CBDCs are going to fail, and I'm going to lay that out for you. And the Fed CBDC isn't even going to be a blockchain, okay? All right, let's go back into more research. Give me one moment.
and and please stick around because I want uh, people to call in and let's just let's just talk about it. Okay, af after we go over the research. Okay, so I went to MIT Media Lab um, Digital Currency Initiative. They are the group that's partnering with the Boston Fed, and they are working on CBDC technology. And let's just take a look at their website. Here's Digital Currency Initiative. Um, empower individuals by making it as fast and easy to move value across the world as it is to move information, right? We just want to speed finality up. Oh, snap. Would you look at this on their homepage? They have a section on Bitcoin security. Why, why do you think the people doing the research on the Fed CBDC is talking about Bitcoin security? Tell me in the chat. Coolin. Okay. Let's just open this article up. Let's see what they're talking about. Uh, Bitcoin security initiative. Bitcoin's uncommon good digital security initiative. Initiative. Okay. Look. Listen to this. As the use of Bitcoin grows and as it becomes more deeply embedded into our societies, the security of the network must grow and strengthen alongside it. Yet, as a common good, there is no one single Bitcoin protector or guardian to take on this formidable task. By design, there is no central command. And while this presents significant logistical challenges, it is also a distinguishing feature, but perhaps most unique to Bitcoin. There is no central point of failure. I want you to remember this, okay? Keep this in mind as we move on through this educational lesson I'm, I'm laying out for you, okay? So let's just let's just open up uh, Open CBDC and let's look at the code release. Let's let's see what they're talking about. Again, this is the group working directly with the Fed to come to develop the code for the CBDC. Let's. What are they about? Okay, Open CBDC. It's, it's an open source project to engage in collaborative technical research to understand the space of designs for potential central bank digital currencies. Why would the Fed want the code for their CBDC to be open sourced? Because open source projects are more secure because people around the world are able to view the code, test it, audit it, and find bugs and issues and errors in the code, okay? This is why China's CBDC is going to be one of the first to fail. <laughs> All right, let's move on. The first contribution is OpenCBDC-TX. This is an experimental transaction processor that emerged from joint research with the Federal Reserve of Boston as part of Project Hamilton. All right, we're going to go into all of this. But um, what I wanted to pull up next is this link, Frequently Asked Questions here. Let's go to um, their Frequently Asked Questions. And I just highlighted a couple, and, and this is really going to lay out what, I'm, what I've been telling you all. From Jump, I, I hope the logic sphere is listening. Um, uh, let me hide that message. I'm sorry. Okay, um, open CBDC frequently asked questions. This is from Project Hamilton. What is Project Hamilton? Project Hamilton is a multi-year collaborative research project between the MIT Digital Currency Initiative and the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. The goal of this Project Hamilton is to investigate the technical feasibility of a general purpose central bank digital currency that could have that could be used by an economy the size of the United States and to gain a hands-on understanding of a CBDC's technical challenges, opportunities, risks, and trade-offs. Where have we heard a multi-year collaborative research project before? Okay, I've, I've talked about this in previous episodes. Let's go back to what the Fed released here, okay? Um, again, this is the Fed released money payments and the U.S. dollar in the digital age of, um, in the age of digital transformation. Um, how did I spell it? Okay, okay. So in, in their release, again, you have to read everything. You have to look at the fine print. 
And here it says, to help address these frictions and unlock growth, the G20 countries agreed in 2020 to a multi-year roadmap to identify and deploy improvements to cross-border payments. When did they start this? In 2020. Okay? <laughs> I mean, this is, this, this is laid out for us. All right? We can't be more clear. What is Open CBDC? Let's go back to our frequently asked questions. The first phase of the Project Hamilton uh, led to the release of Open CBDC TX because they're just focused on transactions right now, a research code base for a transaction processor and an associated research paper. And we're about to go through the research paper, okay? But here's here's the kicker. Through Open CBDC, we also hope to engage a community of engineers and scholars alongside with government, business, and civil society leaders in research and development to learn how digital currency systems can be designed to best advance privacy, user agency, innovation, and financial equity. Okay. What did you build? Okay. They built two architectures for a centralized transaction processor. The first architecture was the atomizer, okay? Uh, this atomizer processes transactions through an ordering server and can handle 170,000 transactions per second. The second architecture was 2PC, processes transactions in parallel on multiple computers and can handle 1.7 million transactions per second. The main functional difference between our two architectures is that the atomizer materializes in ordered history for all transactions, that's why it's slower, while 2PC does not. As we explain in our paper, this highlights initial trade-offs we found between scalability, privacy, and audibility. Okay, we're going to come back to this. Our modular design supports experimentation with mod models where intermediaries could take on a variety of different roles and serve different purposes, including the non-custodial model or self-custody. Wow, uh, this Fed CBDC actually may give you private keys. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this episode, but all of this information is so important. Uh, and again, everything I'm going through is in the links in the description below right now. OK, uh, what is a CBDC? Traditionally, central bank uh, money has taken two forms, either physical currency, which is cash. Widely available for those um, for uh, for use by individuals, businesses and others. OK, um, how much cash is out there? Does anybody know? Let me know in the comments. And I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to tell you exactly how much cash is out there. Um, two is digital reserves, okay? Digital reserves um, are held by eligible financial institutions at the central bank. Uh, CBDC is a generic form for a third version of central bank money that is digital, accessible to individuals directly or intermediate, intermediarily, um, and a direct liability of central banks. C CBDCs are typically grouped in two categories, retail and wholesale. And if you're following politics, especially congressional politics right now, there are um, legislations out there that may get passed that ban central banks from retail CBDCs, or at least the Fed central bank, because Congress is saying, hey, the Fed doesn't provide cash or money directly to consumers now why will they let why will we let them in the future that's a recipe for disaster because if we're giving if the fed is giving money directly to the population to the citizens there's no need for commercial banks do you think commercial banks like jp morgan um all these commercial banks bank of america Citibank, you think they're just going to roll over and take it <laughs> it's about to be a battle within themselves okay here is the kicker, the last q and A I I wanted to go, or um, last frequently asked questions I wanted to go with, oh, go over with you in this live. The question asks, does OpenCBDC use blockchain technology? 
okay? Because people out there in the Twitter space and YouTube and in mainstream media, they will they think that all CBDCs will use blockchain technology. False. What is MIT and the Boston Fed telling you? Our first phase of research borrowed components from blockchain and cryptocurrency systems, but discarded some features of each. More information can be found in our technical paper that we're going to go over, okay? While CBDC is often associated with blockchain, let me highlight this for y'all. While CBDC is often associated with blockchain or digi dis distributed ledger technology, a CBDC does not require a blockchain if it is operating in one trust domain. Let me repeat that for you all. A CBDC, and this is not me. I'm not making this up, right? Th these are mathematicians and data scientists in the Fed telling you this. A CBDC does not require a blockchain if it is operating in one trust domain. We can bet that the Fed CBDC will operate in one trust domain, right? They're not going to give power to Ripple or Stellar or any other centralized entity with a foundation. They're going to build their own blockchain. And it's not, or they're going to build their own CBDC and they're telling you, hey, it's not going to be a blockchain, bro. It's not. Okay, with that, let me go... Um, let me go to the chat. Let me catch up on the chat here. And then we're going to go into the research paper. All right. Uh, let's go to the chat. Let me try to catch up. We've got some new messages. Crawford says, servers are for restaurants, not blockchains. <laughs> yes, you are right. And the word server is all through the research. <laughs> not blockchain, right? Um, Coolin says, yes. Kamala phones coming. Hey, if Kamala is still in office in two years, because I guarantee you there will be no Fed CBDC in two years. It's just not going to happen. We'll probably be in beta phase testing things, but there's not there's not going to be a CBDC by 2024. Um, Nigel says blockchain would equal servers without computers. It wouldn't run. All computers run the blockchain as a program through wallets, staking pools, and such. Nigel also says drawing on the computing power of hundreds, if not thousands of computers to perform operations. Um, yes, you know, that is the blockchain technology, but what the Fed is telling you is that it's slow. Like Ripple is slow. Ripple only does 1,500 transactions per second. Blockchains are not efficient for what CBDCs are trying to accomplish. And developers are telling you this, all right? Um, Michael Merriweather. Hey, Michael, that looks like a new name. Thanks for joining. Uh, he says, sir, haven't you heard of, <laughs> sir, haven't you heard of Obama phones? Oh, uh, have, haven't you heard of Obama phones? It won't be a problem giving out smartphones. Um, yeah, it won't be a problem, but how far are we from that? You know, how far are we from that? Um, Coolin says, pull up this China's BSN. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up later. Um, Nigel, if you, ha if you open the about tab on most wallets, it usually says MIT in there. Yep, MIT is definitely on the forefront of blockchain technology. Crawford says, <laughs> infinite cash. They print what they want. Uh, uh, the, the derive the rest in the form of debt and other means. Yeah, they uh, federal banks print what they want. They do what they want. And with this technology, this new technology, they're going to um, collapse even sooner, right? Well, what we're doing, we're giving um, a pound of heroin, a kilo of heroin to a heroin addict with this technology to central banks. Uh, they're, they're going to self-implode. Um, Kulin says they can say what they want, but those these countries are not doing that. We'll see. 
the, the cool him. The only thing we know for sure is that Bitcoin is going to be here and it's going to pump out a block every 10 minutes. All right, let, let's move on to um, a high performance payment system. This is the actual research paper, okay, um, from the Boston Fed and the MIT coders, the data sci scientists, right? And this is what I tell people. Don't listen to marketers or YouTubers. Listen to the developers, okay? Listen to what they say. And that's how you become wealthy in this industry is where is your resource? A high-performance payment processing system designed for central bank digital currencies, this is entitled, and it lists all of the authors here of the research paper. So anytime, the first thing you do when you come across a research paper is you look up the authors, all right? So that's what I did. Uh, let me pull this up for you. So all of these authors, I looked them up. Here we go. Give me a sec. Where's the page? Okay, here we go. All right. First one, James Lovejoy. He's got a Twitter. Super nerd, right? Well, I don't know James. I, I hate to call him a nerd, but um, uh, just look at his credentials here. CBD, let me blow this up for you so you can see this. All right. Uh, um, the first thing you notice is Bitcoin symbol in his cover page, right? All right. CBDC research at the Boston Fed, formerly MIT DCI, ex-president of the MIT Bitcoin Club. So I, I think he knows about computer science, right? Sc follow him on Twitter. Scroll through his posts. A lot of wealth, wealth of knowledge here. All right. Let's move on to the second author, Corey Fields. What is Corey Fields? A Bitcoin core developer. So, so, so why do you think the Fed is working with Bitcoin core developers? All right, let's go to, let's, I'm, I'm just asking, let me know in the comments. Why is the Fed building a CBDC with Bitcoin developers and not Ripple developers, not Stellar developers, not Algorand developers, not Cardano developers, not Ethereum developers? All right, let's move on to the third author here, uh, Madars Versa, okay? Again, a wealth of knowledge on his Twitter timeline. Let's go to his LinkedIn. All right. Student at uh, MIT. What's his background? Super smart. Doctor of Philosophy in Computer Science at MIT. You think he knows what he's talking about? Let's move on. Let's go to his website. Let's look at Verza's publications. Look at, look at all of these computer science-related publications. Scalable zero knowledge via cycles of elliptic curves. Cluster computing in zero knowledge. You, you think you know? You think he knows what he's talking about? Okay. Let's move on. Next author, David Ernest. What's this guy about? Product manager at Google. Wow. Stellar. Product manager at MIT Media Lab. Product management intern at Google. You know? Engagement manager at McKinsey and Company. Software engineer. Right? L look at all this. Look at all the degrees this guy has. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Next author of this collaboration between MIT and the Fed, this Kevin guy, Kowalski. What does this guy do? He is the principal architect at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. You think he, you think he knows what he's doing? Uh, director of DevOps, Rocket Insights. No, he worked at Circle. What do you know about Circle? Right, USDC, software engineer, manager of trading infrastructure. Wow, stud, right? Let's move on. This guy, and Anders Brownworth, applied CBDC research, formerly at USDC, formerly at Circle, research and development, bandwidth.com, 
MIT, SBU, runner. Hel this guy flies a helicopter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, the, the, uh, let's move on. Uh, Neha Narla, okay? She was the director. Uh, she works on scaling systems and platforms for the internet. Director of Digital Currency at Media Lab. PhD from MIT. Formerly Dig, formerly Google. Right? Let's go to her website. Look at her publications. Let me blow this up for you. Let me blow this up for you uh, so you can see this. Look, look, look at N Niha's uh, publications here. You know what I mean? Look at all these publications about data science and computation. Distributed systems. You think she knows what she's talking about? One other thing I wanted to point out here that was really interesting Again, you have to follow the developers, not, not the YouTube influencers. Okay, um, she actually reposted a thread from Tom Emmer. Uh, Tom Emmer said, today I introduced a bill prohibiting the Fed from issuing central bank digital currency directly to individuals. So what Congress wants to do is stomp out the idea of retail CBDCs. So all of you Ripple people, if the Fed CBDC won't be a retail CBDC, what happens to your entire thesis of a CBDC being a global reserve currency? All right, but, but let's listen to what she says here because this is interesting. She says, everything else in this thread is great. Matching the properties of cash, privacy, and user control in any central bank digital currency is the right approach. But this one statement has issues, which is reflective of binary thinking around CBDC system design. So you, you see already, you, you see that what the developers are saying is like, hey, what politicians want is not even possible right now. But, but let's move on to what he said, what she says. I don't see the point of bothering with central bank digital currency at all if it requires users to access it through a commercial bank, which I hope uh, Representative Tom Emmer isn't proposing, which that is exactly what he's proposing. How is that different from the system we have today? And this is my whole argument uh, uh, against these Ripple and Stellar people, is that what problem does a CBDC solve? None. Unless a central bank can issue money directly to the consumer, there's no reason to have a CBDC. Right? Okay. L let me see if there's anything in the chat. No, no more in the chat. Let's move on to some more critical, important information. And then I'm going to open up the lines for anyone to call in. Um because a lot of people have been talking crazy in the chat. Not this chat, but other chats I've been a part of. Okay, let's move into uh, uh, the actual research paper that was released. So there's just a couple things um, that I want to show you just right off the bat to all my Ripple and Stellar people. All right, I'm just going to search this document for Stellar comes up. What about XLM? Nothing comes up, right? What about um, Ripple? Nothing comes up. What about XRP? Nothing comes up. What, what about this new coin people are talking about, XCD? Nothing comes up. Um, Elrond? Nothing comes up. Algorand? Nothing comes up. Ethereum. Oh, there is some um, Ethereum things that comes up. Um, several cryptocurrencies like Ethereum chose this data representation. Okay, they're actually talking about the account balances here, and they actually cross Ethereum for this. Um, here's some more Ethereum. 
Uh, Bitcoin's UTXO state is over four gigabytes and Ethereum's is almost a terabyte and described in blah, 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 this um, section here. This poses data retention and user privacy challenges. So what this is saying is that um, the more information you can actually store in a transaction makes it slower. Okay, so let's let's just look what else they're talking about Ethereum. They're talking about Ethereum developers, Solidity, smart contracting language. Um, they just reference a couple of Ethereum projects here. Project Yellow Paper. A Ethereum chain full sync data size. So what they're saying is, is it's just too slow. Like, uh, uh, okay, um, let's let's keep searching some things here. Um, well, what's another coin you think is going to flip Bitcoin? You know, uh, do, I'm going to leave this link in the in the description below. Just search the document. Put any other um, altcoin you want in here and see if it comes up, right? So let's just type in Bitcoin. Wow, Bitcoin is referenced 42 th times. Wow. Why do you think that is? Look at this. Tracking of unspent entries is central to this model. So following Bitcoin, these have a special name, UTXOs. Okay, this is the unspent transaction outputs. Importantly, UTXOs are never modified and must be spent in their entirety. Therefore, Alice, uh, blah, 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 they give an example here. But there is something I wanted to show you. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Uh... Uh, bu, 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 bu. Oh, look, they're talking about the Lightning Network in here. Interesting. Huh. Um, I might have to search UTXO. Uh, we now discuss the benefits and drawbacks of UHS. This is when they kind of rip apart Ethereum. But I will tell you that in the research uh, for their two examples, they use UTXO model. Why do you think they would use the same UTXO model that's in Bitcoin in their CBDC projections? I'm just asking questions here. I, I think I know the answer, but tell me in the chat. Do you think they want their CBDC to be compatible with the Bitcoin settlement layer? Hmm. Look at this. By leveraging classical distri distributed uh, computing algorithms, we implemented a highly scalable CBDC platform while supporting a Bitcoin-like transaction format. Why do you think they're building a CBDC that's highly scalable, that's a centralized server, but it's in the same Bitcoin format? Could we speculate and say that they'll use the CBDC for transactions, but they'll use the Bitcoin base layer settlement layer to settle those transactions? Right? Why would a CBDC use Bitcoin for a settlement layer? Because no one entity or foundation can control the Bitcoin settlement layer. Let's 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 search some other things here. Uh, blockchain. Since most of you all think that um, CBDCs are going to be on a blockchain, let's see what the data science scientists say. Oh, here we go. Considering blockchain technology, four point four. Many have suggested using blockchain technology to to design a central bank digital currency. Blockchain technology has been used to refer a wide range of technologies compromising um, distri distributed consensus protocols, hashing digital sig signatures, zero-knowledge proofs, and distributed databases. Many of these technologies um, predate the first time the term was used in Bitcoin. Wow, look at this, y'all. We found that using a blockchain-based system in its entirety was not a good match for our requirements. The first reason is due to performance. 
Byzantine fault tolerant consensus algorithms and other new blockchain consensus protocols generally provide lower performance than Raft. And any single state machine architecture will be limited by the resources of one server. Okay, and then they go into what they did and why what they did is, is better uh, than using a blockchain for CBDC. Is 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 this sinking in? Let's 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 look at China. Okay, look look at this related work, Kulin. They're talking about China. Central banks around the world are in a wide variety of stages with regard to CBDCs. Some are in research and development phases, while others are running pilots and even launching products to the public. China's digital um, CN electronic CNY is currently in public trials in a centralized system based on the UTXO model. That's interesting. Even China CBDC is based on the same model as Bitcoin. Hey, Kulin, does Ripple use UTXO model? No, it doesn't. Does Ethereum use UTXO model? No, it doesn't. Huh. 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 Anyway, let me let what I just said marinate. And we're just going to jam out for a little bit. And I'm going to go to the chat. And I'm going to let y'all call in. All right. All right. Um, let me get my link together. I want you to call in. Let's talk about it. I'm going to invite guests here. I did fix the echo. So we should be all good. Let me make sure I have my audio right. All right. Um, I just dropped the link in the chat. Uh, if you want to call in, click that link. You can join uh, by desktop, mobile, uh, whatever you have. Uh, let's talk about it, and I'll bring you up. Let's have some discussions about why the Fed CBDC isn't going to use a blockchain, but you've been letting these altcoin marketers lie to you. All right. I, I know it's pretty late out there, but um, if you want to join me, uh, have some questions or you just want to discuss anything about some of the research I just laid out, feel free to join. Uh, while we're waiting on people to join, let me um, look up what Kulin was talking about. Um, China, BSN. China's blockchain-based service network is planning to introduce non-fungible tokens. The South China Morning posted back multi-blockchain. Yeah, but I mean, this is China saying this. So, um, has anybody seen the code?
All right, I'm going to leave the lines open. Um, again, if you want to call in, feel free. Okay, okay. I'm just going to look more into this BSN network. Uh, I don't have my translator um, on this. But uh, cool, and I'll look into this more. I'll talk about it next week. Lovenzi, venez ici. Non, c'est joué en moi, monsieur. Lovenzi, venez ici. All right, all right. If you're just joining, it looks like some people are still trickling in. I laid out the case of why the Fed CBDC will not even use blockchain technology. And actually, the code base they are working on is compatible with Bitcoin. You know? Will the Fed CBDC settle on a Bitcoin settlement layer? That's more probable than Ripple or Stellar. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. Crawford says, um, just because it says it's a blockchain doesn't make it so. There is a catch-up company called <laughs> itself Blockchain Catch-Up. That is so true, especially when it when it's coming from the um, from China, right? You can't believe anything they say until we see the code. You know, verify. Do not trust. All right, I'm um I am going to end the chat here in a little bit if nobody wants to call in. I will be back um hopefully next Sunday. Um it's been an eventful part of my life right now. Um to say the least. Actually in the middle of completely upgrading my entire life, which has been a blessing. Look at all these transactions that are theoretically impossible to roll back. Let's see what this transaction was. Open, distributed, ledger, immutable. It's about the settlement layer. All right, we do have some chat here. It says um, XMR is the way. Is that Monero? Bro. Um, what are you talking about? I think that's Monero, right? It's been so long. Yeah, that's Monero. Um, um, Monero is not the way. Um, Bitcoin is the way because Bitcoin will allow for private transactions, right? Um, Monero is not secure. And when we think about um, just monetary policy in general, um, 
the weaker, the softer asset always goes to zero compared to the harder asset. Um, what do I mean by hard hardness of an asset? Now let's look at this. What I mean by hardness of an asset is, is it durable? Is it divisible? Is it fungible? Is it portable? Is it verifiable? Is it scarce? And what is its track record? There will be, I'll say this with 99.9% .9 confidence, there will be no, no other cryptocurrency that will be a harder asset than Bitcoin, all right? And I will prove this to you. Let's just look at Monero, all right? I've got Monero pulled up right now, and I'm comparing it to Bitcoin. Um, let's, zo let's zoom out. How do I zoom out? Hold on, hold on. Okay, let me do this. This is this is your monthly chart. All right. Um, it all goes to zero, right? Compared to Bitcoin, and really, it wicked up all the way up here. So let me let me kind of get accurate here for you. Oh sh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So so this is Monero's performance compared to Bitcoin. You see what I'm saying? All of these shit coins are going to zero compared to the hardest asset, which is Bitcoin. There, there's nothing Monero can do that Bitcoin cannot. All right, let me go back to the chat here. Um, but Mon Monero was cool, like four or five years ago, but after Bitcoin has upgraded, we allow private transactions on top of the Bitcoin network, which is the hardest, most secure blockchain in creation. Okay, OS Crate says, UTG is the BTC of crypto tubers. I don't know about that, man. I appreciate the love. Um, how you doing, OS Crates? Um, I hope you're doing all good. Um, I've actually made a big move in my life. Uh, connect with me on the Discord, man. I want to connect with you again. Uh, we need to reconnect for sure. But hey, you know, on this channel, we are we are realistic. We follow the data. Uh, we follow charts. And um, we've all been there. When we first got into cryptocurrency, we thought big, some other cryptocurrency is going to flip Bitcoin. But it's not about features, right? It's about security. It's about monetary policy of a blockchain. And no, no other blockchain is going to beat Bitcoin in that instance, okay? And uh, if you want to call in and talk to me, I will put the link in the description here. You don't have to, no pressure. Just if you want to. I'm going to be around uh, maybe 15 or 20 more minutes than I'm going to call in a night. But um, the sooner as a cryptocurrency investor you realize there is no second best, the richer in the long term you will be. Not just with finances, but with your circle, right? Your circle of friends. Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong. But um, OS Crates, if you're just joining, man, I, I really ripped CBDCs um, or blockchains that claim they're going to be the blockchain of CBDCs apart because the Fed CBDC isn't even going to use a blockchain. All right, I'm going to hang around about 15 more minutes or so. Um, let's just jam out if nobody else has any questions or comments. I've gone through what I want to go through. Thank you.
yeah, all all altcoins, all altcoins are fiat, right? What's one common theme of fiat? They all go to zero. They all go to zero compared to the harder asset, which is gold, right? That's the same thing is going to happen with Bitcoin. All these altcoins are going to go towards zero compared to the hardest asset. It's about monetary policy, not features, not transaction speed, but your the security of your settlement layer. Man, I'll tell you what, I was in several different groups throughout the week um, just laying this case out. Got so much heat, got so much debate, but um, after I went through this episode, none of them wanted to, to log on and call in. Isn't that funny? And if you're just joining me, this is the IOHK visualization of the Bitcoin blockchain. This is just absolutely beautiful. I love playing with this. This is the Bitcoin blockchain, right? The blocks are the spiral outwards from the center. Um, and a block is created roughly every 10 minutes. The, the, the Bitcoin blockchain is a living, breathing computer code that self-heals, <laughs> right? It's, it's not static. It, it reacts to its environment. Okay, looks like we have a chat. Passive income. What's up, man? Um, will the transaction burning fees of ETH make it harder than BTC? No, it won't. The fact that they're burning Ethereum makes it soft because you are changing the monetary policy. You cannot change the monetary policy of Bitcoin. What if Vitalik dies and a new foundation head comes in and says, you know what? Let's just roll back all those burned coins we just burned. The fact that they change the monetary policy and they're changing the consensus mechanism makes it soft. Hey, what's up, passive income? No. Supply doesn't correlate with hardness. Monetary policy, immutable monetary policy makes it hard. Why has gold been a store of value for 5,000 years? Because you cannot change the atomic structure of gold without it changing from gold, right? Gold has a strict, a strict set of atomic features. So does Bitcoin. It can't be changed. Uh, Crawford says, um, uh, let me pull this up, Crawford. I, I forget I have all these features on this new system now. Uh, but Vitalik never has to spend his ETH either. So if they keep burning, he eventually has more control. Exactly, Crawford. And this is more game theory, all right? The Bitcoin that we are buying today, our proportion of the Bitcoin supply will never change for the next two, three, four, five millennia. The proportion of XRP you're buying right now could very well change. The proportion of Ethereum you buy right now will change. And if you're just starting to buy Ethereum right now, you will never have as much Ethereum as the people that came before you, because with proof of stake, the people who have the most get the most rewards. So all proof of stake is, is a fiat system. Okay. And I'm trying to get y'all to understand that. Oh, Ish, what's up, Ish? Um, hold on, hold on. Ish, what's up, man? Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, OS Crate says, 
Let me pull this up. OS Crates says, in the current dollar fiat system, when you pay down debt, dollars are liter literally destroyed. Do you feel the dollar is a better store of value if you pay off your debt? Um, I don't think so right now. What, what I think is that, um, with every dollar I get, no matter how much debt you or anyone has, put it towards the hardest asset that has the most upside potential because Bitcoin is going to appreciate faster than any debt you have. Um, and, and that's a, that's another thing. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up uh, when we're talking about store value and, and destroying dollars. Um, who asked that question before? Passive income. If you went to the grocery store and you bought groceries, it's $200. You got to pay, I don't know, 5% um, in tax. So you got to pay an extra $5. What if they took that $5 and they burned $2.50 in front of your face? How pissed would you be? That's what Ethereum is doing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, Crawford says, I still like Cardano. Yeah, I, I, I love Cardano too. Um, but you know, we do... I'm a point in my cryptocurrency journey where I realize everything outside of Bitcoin is a shitcoin, but I do like to invest into shitcoins that I think will be here at least for two or three generations, right? And I think Cardano is one of those shitcoins that will do that. Um, will Cardano be around 500 or a thousand years from now? Probably not because what it is trying to accomplish, which is, um, bringing financial inclusion to Africa. Um, once they accomplish that, then what do they do? You know what I mean? So I, I view Cardano as like a Google or an Apple, right? And when we look at market caps, and this is what I tell people. Let me pull this up. This is what I tell people. It's not about utility or features or use case because Google has more... Um, features and use case than gold but which one has the higher market cap let me see if i can pull this up oh man i don't even know what it is y'all um anyway i was going to try to pull this up give me one second i, I want to make a point here was it earlier today Oh, here it is. Here it is. Infinite market cap. Um, go to 8marketcap.com. Gold has an $11.5 trillion market cap. Apple has a $2.8 trillion market cap. Which one has more features? Which one has more utility? Apple or gold? What has more features, Microsoft or gold? What has more utility, gasoline and oil or gold? Why does gold completely crush all of these quote-unquote features and use cases? Does, does gold have more utility and use case than Amazon? The play is store of value, not features. Um, OS Crate says, agreed, I'm in it rhetorically okay i thought you did <laughs> i don't know because I'm, I'm i'm reading i don't trust any fiat or coin with an elite class that controls it that's right and you shouldn't okay um i've got about five more minutes till i shut it down uh os crate says how crazy is it that the Federal Reserve is a private corporation with complete legal secrecy in its controlling members? That is absolutely insane. You are right. 
But um, with the CBDC, <laughs> Congress is about to check the Fed. What happens when Congress finally realizes they do not need a Federal Reserve or a central bank? What, what happens when AOC realizes that? What happens when Elizabeth Warren realizes, hey, if we build a CBDC, hire some MIT grads to build a CBDC on top of Bitcoin, why do we need a central bank? CBDCs are going to fail, y'all. Okay, uh, Crawford says, technically gold allows Apple and Microsoft's machines to function. Maybe they could find another suitable metal, but it's used now. Yeah, it's used now, but um, I see what you're saying. It, it does have functionality. I mean, it's it's used in, in parts and things, but um, those parts could easily replace gold, right? So, I mean, when, when I say utility, I mean... Every, every single person who has a smartphone or a computer uses Google every day. They do not use gold every day. So when, when these alt corners say, uh, Bitcoin doesn't have any utility, doesn't have any functionality, it doesn't need to, right? Bitcoin's playing a different game. Bitcoin's going after wealth and store of value. Let's look at this. This is what I mean about wealth and store of value. And Ripple Army, I hope you're listening. Right now, currencies across the world is 120 million. And I think that's an over an estimate right now. If all currencies started using Ripple, it's a drop in the bucket compared to all of the wealth in the world. When we're talking about wealth, we're talking about real estate, stocks, crypto, silver, gold, derivatives, and bonds. Currencies is a drop in a bucket. You're betting on losers. Gabriel, hey, what's up, man? Um, Gabriel says, uh, what do you think about Solana? Um, can I be honest with you? Because I'm always honest, Gabriel. Um, I, and I think you're a new name, so I'm not trying to scare you off. But if you don't like honesty, this isn't the channel for you. Um, Solana is a VC scam. Um how many times did it go down? How many times did the blockchain just stop? Hmm? Solana is this cycle's EOS. I want you to go Google EOS and go Google the history of EOS. Solana, go down. <laughs> Let's just search that. Um, and this is January 24th. In the last 24 hours, Solana has tanked more than 17%. Uh, I'm not talking about the price. I'm talking about the blockchain. Solana blockchain. Um, offline. Okay. Look at this. January 4th, 2022. Solana network goes offline again. So this has happened multiple times. And I think it's happened about four or five times by now where the Solana blockchain just stops working. Why? Because it's about the blockchain trilemma. Let me show you this. Okay. Um, let me try to find a, a graphic for this. Okay, so this is the blockchain trilemma. Why is it, can I not blow this up? Okay. So computer science and mathematics tells us that blockchains can either be secure, decentralized, or have speed. So Bitcoin has focused on security, right? Security and decentralization. You can have two of these three features, but you can never have all three of these features on the base layer of your blockchain, okay? So what these altcoins have done is said, hey, Bitcoin is secure and it's decentralized, yeah, but it, it's not fast. So these other altcoins tried to solve the speed problem. And what we have found is that as blockchains pivot towards speed, they lose security. 
Solana is not decentralized, right? Ethereum is not decentralized. Cardano, mm, arguably not decentralized, but more decentralized than most of the proof of stake protocols. Um, what else? Um, Ripple, definitely not secure, <laughs> decentralized, right? Definitely not secure, but it's fast, right? But what people are starting to realize is that for your settlement layer, the only thing you need to worry about is security and decentralization because you can build speed as second and third layer solutions. But if your foundation isn't secure, if your foundation goes offline, it is a shit coin. Solana is a shit coin. Ripple is a shit coin. All right. Um, <laughs> Crawford says, and I, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings, Gabriel, but... Um, that's just what I think um, and what um, data sci scientists think. Uh, uh, Crawford Fortune says Solana is complete trash. I agree with that. All right, back to Gabriel. Um, what do you think about Solana? Just answer that. I'm sorry, I, I get a lag. It's about a 30-second to 45-second lag when you type your comment in until I get it. Um uh, Crawford says you retracted it six. Oh, yeah, yeah, six times. Six times the Solana blockchain has gone down. Get your money out. It's a VC play, right? Because um, VCs have heavily invested in Solana. That's why it came out of nowhere into the top 10. They're going to keep pumping the price. But I guarantee you Solana will not be in the top 10 this time next cycle. I bet you a Bitcoin on that. The, the play here is generational wealth, people. Store of value. Okay. Um, I'll kind of hang out a couple more minutes, see if anybody else trickles in. And if you want to call in, I will put the link in the description or in the chat. Let me see if I can get there. All right, all right. Nobody has any other questions. Um, I am going to spend some time with my lovely wife. I hope you have a lovely evening. I usually do this Bitcoin therapy every Sunday. I had some connectivity issues this past Sunday. But um, I will be around. And my little sister, she also does lives. So she normally does that on Friday nights. So be sure to subscribe, hit the like, hit the, the, the subscribe button. And I will see you all next time. Se detiene.